Hi guys! So this is my intro to my intro. Um, this video today is just kind of a fun Sunday hodgepodge of a few different things. Um, I knew I wanted to read Philippians chapter 1 and I am going to commit right now that I'm going to eventually read all four chapters of Philippians because I am just loving that book um, because I heart Paul. Um, so if you want, grab your Bibles, have them ready and read along with me. Um, Philippians chapter one, that'll be at the end of this video. And, um, uh, between now and then I'm going to show you bits and pieces of, um, how I have navigated this lovely day with my family. We still have lots of Super Bowl action ahead of us. Um, but you'll see a little bit of some bright light eating meals and some bright light eating strategies and my new little glass jars I got at Walmart. So grab your Bible if you want to read along. Here we go. Good morning. Happy Sunday. My name is Emily. I'm a faithful follower of Christ. I'm addicted to sugar, flour, and binging. We just went to church. It was lovely. And um, I hope you're having a nice Sunday. Um, I ran in here to get my food. I'm going to go ahead and eat um, what I already had measured out. So my rice, my green beans, my corn, my butter, my apples, my cheese. I love all this food. I have such peace with this program. I have peace within boundaries, peace within these parameters. It makes my life easier and I'm all for anything that makes my life easier because for those of you that don't know, we have five kids, four dogs, and we, um, our family farm is thousands of acres and thousands of cows. Um, and I'm looking at 19 Charlet bulls right now. We raise Charlet bulls. So anything to help me simplify um, my family is going to come back and get me and we're going to go out to lunch and I'm going to enjoy my decaf coffee while they eat. I could eat. I could. You can do it. At, you can do that at restaurants. But you guys here at the tail end of my weight loss, I am honing in and refocusing almost like I did in the beginning. And um, yes, you can go eat at restaurants like this. No big deal. Just have the plate. Just um, eyeball it. However you want to do but I, I, um, I want really bright lines right now and it's just not worth it to me to get in there and be like, Ooh, now that looks good and that smells good and that tastes good and deal with, um, all that at a restaurant, deal with myself at a restaurant, um, trying to blur the lines and get a little extra here or there. Nope. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to enjoy my decaf. Um, and this is, this video is going to be me reading the book of Philippians. So I hope you enjoy. Excuse me. All I'm going to read is chapter one. I am leading six women through the Bible right now. And we've read several books of the Bible and we're on Philippians and chapter one is so good. All right, we'll get into it. Here we go. Okay. So here we go. I've got my food. I'm going to enjoy right now while my husband drives. Greg, what are you playing? Clash Royale. Clash Royale. Um, my apples for dessert, my decaf coffee in case the restaurant doesn't have decaf. Um, I haven't had regular caffeinated coffee for um, two or three years now. I got super addicted to caffeine. Are you seeing a pattern? Um, I caused myself to have adrenal fatigue over and over. I looked up, I, I googled one day, why am I always so exhausted? And coffee was one of the main reasons why. I was demanding my body to pump out adrenaline and stay in a fight or flight state and it um, went on strike. My adrenal glands gave up. Adrenal fatigue. So, okay, everybody say hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. Okay, so I'm going to get into the book of Philippians. I um, will not read every book like this, but I do want to read Philippians. It's very short and lovely. Um, I also want to say happy, happy um, lovely Sunday. If you woke up this morning, God still has work for you to do. Psalm 139. When our work is complete, he will call us home. Um, so hallelujah that we still have work to do. If we're still living and breathing. And if you do not know Jesus, hallelujah, you still have, hallelujah, you still have time to get to know him because, um, I want to throw this out there. Hell the definition of hell is just eternal separation from God, but that is not something that will be um, forced upon us. That's a choice we get to make. So if you do not know Jesus, 
on this Sunday. Let me preach. Here I go. If you don't know him, get to know him. He's super nice. Start with the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Gospel just means good news. Start with the Gospels. So the Bible is 66 books. It's broken. Old Testament, New Testament. The Old Testament predicts and prophesies that um, the Messiah is coming. And um, the New Testament is the difference between the old and the new is Jesus himself. So girls, Clara, get buckled in that booster seat. Okay. Anyways, um, get to know Jesus if you don't know him. Um, and uh, we're going to get to know Paul a little bit. Philippians is all about Paul. He's in prison writing a letter to the Philippians. Um, and um, Paul just amazes me. I love that guy. Tacos and burritos, tortillas covered in cheese. And that is how I gained, relleno. and the chili relleno, and that is how I gained 100 pounds in the first place. I'm happy to so enjoy my decaf. Go girl! What's that? You always can have it. I can have it. Oh, thank you. Look, Mary said I can have her tomato. Because I'm going to pick it right Thank nose. you. I'll thank you. I'll, oh, yeah, we dropped it. Because if he gets tired, you can't do it. Did we drop it? Okay, so I love my jars that are this size. These are hard to find now, by the way. Um, but lately, I've been wanting smaller ones. So look what I just found at Walmart. I ran in to get a couple other things and found these little half pint, eight ounce jars. Yay for my my food prep, meal prep. That is gonna be so perfect for cottage cheese or six ounces of fruit. Yay. Good job, Mary. Do it again. Do it again. Mary's breaking the ice for the dog water. Okay, we're home from church, we're home from lunch, we're home from Walmart, and these little jars make my day. Seriously, how cute are they? So, y'all ready? Let's go read Philippians chapter 1. Okay, so here we go. Like I said, um, I'm currently leading six women through the Bible. Um, we have read, we take turns, the seven of us take turns choosing a book. So we have read the book of Acts, Leviticus, Lamentations, Romans, Daniel, Micah, John, 3rd John, Ecclesiastes, Ephesians, James, Genesis, Exodus, and now we are reading Philippians. And um, like I said, if you're not familiar, the Bible is broken into um, two halves, Old Testament and New Testament, and the difference is Jesus. So the Old Testament leads up to Jesus. And um, the New Testament is all about Jesus. So um, it's fascinating to read the Old Testament talking about the coming Messiah and what the details will be, and then to see that fulfilled in the New Testament. So um, I'm so excited to read Philippians because I um, adore Paul. And Paul um, was Saul. And he used to kill Christians. He was like um, after them and he'd kill them and he would, well, he was just like uh, working for the other side. And um, then in the book of Acts, I believe it's chapter nine, um, we can read about his encounter with Christ on the road to Damascus. And um, that was... Um, in AD 61, I believe. And um, so this was after Christ had already um, been crucified and resurrected and Paul had an encounter with him. And that is when Jesus said, um, you're gonna be, you're gonna work for me and um, changed his name from Saul to Paul. And then Paul ended up writing. So there are, um, 
66 books in the Bible. And let's see here. Twenty-seven in the old, excuse me, in the New Testament, and Paul wrote thirteen. So in my Bible, I've got all these tabs, and then in the New Testament, I put this red marker around. Look at that. Paul wrote every one of those, and most of them, if not all of them, are letters that he wrote. Um, so, Philippians is a letter that he wrote to the Christians at Philippi from prison. Um, but, right before we jump into that, um, celebrate recovery daily devotional. Here's a word of encouragement for you ladies, any of you out there, by the way, but especially you ones that have hopped on. Um, not especially, it's for all y'all, but you ones that have hopped on, you're going to do this 35 day commitment with me. Um, today's, I'm on day 113, but today's devotional was so sweet and nice and encouraging. And the verse is Matthew 25, 21. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Um, and the author of this devotional said, what matters, I'm skipping ahead, is progress, not perfection. Um, I used to quote Michelle Duggar from uh, 19 Kids and Counting. I used to live 10 miles from her. I actually... Um, met her once. She spoke at a, a church that I was visiting and she used to say, um, practice makes progress, not perfection. So ladies, um, after these 35 days, we know we'll be 35 days further on our journey. And, um, even if these 35 days are not perfect, even if they're not perfect, when I used to teach special ed, 100% was never the goal. It was never the goal for the child to perform perfectly. So we used to say, how about 90%? How about um, 80%? I am shooting, um, this is that lipstick I was telling you gets all over your teeth. I am shooting for 100%. That's my goal. I want to um, get 35 bright days in a row. But no matter what, we are making progress. We're doing this together. We're finding ways to um, reach out and connect and just um, keep things headed in the right direction. So what matters is progress, not perfection. Then he goes on to say, getting better one day at a time is what the Bible calls sanctification. Becoming more like Jesus one moment at a time, one step at a time, one day at a time is what we call recovery. At the end of our race, we have a diploma waiting for us. And right at the top are the words, well good, excuse me, well done, good and faithful servant. At the bottom, it's already signed by Jesus, the one and only perfect person and faithful servant. So the prayer at the bottom of this says, Lord God, thank you for helping me clean up my life one moment at a time. In Jesus' name, amen. So that's what we are doing. We are cleaning up our life. We are getting things in order that have been in disorder. And... Um, that's that's just uh, it's it's a beautiful thing it's a beautiful process and it's an interesting thing to discern um, you know when you go against the grain and you do things different than the world would say to do them or you do things different than what it looks like almost everyone around you is doing it it is important to um, to discern that um, that what you're doing is what God wants you to be doing and that um, things are headed in the right direction and getting in better order. So I hope you can tell from the pictures and videos that I shared, I had a lovely lunch with my family and that was um, the second time that I've done that where they just ate and had fun. They ate, drank, and were merry. And I um, drank decaf and had fun with Mary, my little Mary. Um, but it really was a good time and my husband made a healthy choice what he got you know he's sitting right next to me he made a healthy choice and then we left there um done everybody had fun and there were no dishes and it was a treat for me to not cook so i'm gonna call that a win you know these are like little experiments to see how things go but um you all saw those me those meals that is um mexican food is so yummy and um, all those tortillas covered in all that cheese and cheese has casein in it and cheese 
is addictive. It's, um, it can be very addictive. It's, it's, it's kind of why, um, carbohydrates covered in cheese is, a uh, something that'll get your brain lit up. So, um, I want to be aware of what's, what's in my food and what, um, might trigger my brain to say, what the heck? We can start this over tomorrow. Um, nope. We're not today's day two of 35. So um, there is a little word of encouragement that we are um, working on our, not only our sanctification, but our recovery. So we're working on um, becoming more and more like Jesus every day, um, every moment. And we're also taking our lives and our recovery one meal at a time, one day at a time. So let's jump into Philippians. Um, I am reading out of my life application study Bible. And I'm going to read this whole chapter and I want you to see it just tickled me. The top half, this is the Bible up here. This is all commentary down here. But just this one chapter, um, there it is. There's the other half. You can see I just went crazy writing there. I read this with my husband this morning and I was so excited because it's so chock full, you guys, of... um. Of verses that I've always heard and verses that I've quoted um, like I said you can hop over I have another YouTube channel called free produce stand I gave out food once a week for six months and um, a verse that's on there is Philippians 1 3 um, I thank my God every time I remember you so there are there's lots of Philippians um, and we will get into um, eventually Philippians 4 13 I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me um, you guys, Paul, he's got quite the, so many one-liners, so many good quotes, and it's really a joy to see them in context and read them while they're sandwiched in between, um, all his other words that he was writing from prison nonetheless. So, um, speaking of getting our lives cleaned up, this is all stuff I'm looking forward to getting put away before, um, renovation phase two begins, which I don't know when it will. We shall see. We're going back and forth with our contractor now. All right. Philippians chapter one, and I'm going to stop every once in a while and interject some thoughts, but I hope to not take away from the word itself. Joy and suffering. Um, chapter one, Paul and Timothy servants of Christ Jesus to all the saints in Christ Jesus at Philippi together with the overseers and deacons, grace and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So that is um, Paul's greeting to this letter that he wrote. Thanksgiving and prayer. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. You guys, I gotta hop, I'm gonna hop in here. Um, that's something, Philippians 1, 6 is something that I quote quite often. Um, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion. So hang in there, keep going, keep going. You are in the midst of a transformation and I promise you it's much more than physical. Okay, I'm gonna pick back up at verse seven. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart. For whether I am in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how long, excuse me, God can testify how I long for all of you with the, with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Christ, through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. I'm going to read that again. And this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Okay. And then Paul's, this says Paul's chains advance the gospel. 
So here he is chained up, being persecuted for his faith. And he says, now I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear through the whole, throughout the whole palace guard. As a result, it has, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. So there was no, um, there was no question, no doubt. He was in chains because he was preaching the gospel. Because of my chains, most of the brothers in the Lord have been encouraged to speak the word of God more courageously and fearlessly. Amen. Because he was in chains, other people were rising up, and he had the wherewithal to realize that. I just love that. And this is all without cell phones and social media. It is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so in love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I am in chains. So he's saying people are going around preaching Christ just to make his life more miserable. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And because of this, I rejoice. Okay, this made me laugh out loud when I was reading this this morning with my husband because I said, wow, Paul really had a good attitude good attitude <laughs> like that's um it's a really solid healthy perspective on things he's like I don't care why they're preaching it as long as they're preaching it um, let's go let's move on so he says yes and I will continue to rejoice for I know that through your prayers and the help given by the Spirit of Jesus Christ what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. So he's saying, I will not be ashamed, but I will have courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body whether by life or by death and here's one that you might have heard before for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain so he's saying it's a win-win to live is Christ and to die is gain to live to still be living in these bodies and have Christ dwelling within you and the Holy Spirit that's a win but to die and be with him um, to be absent from these bodies is to be present with Christ he's saying either way he's good if I am to go on living in the body this will mean fruitful labor for me yet what shall I choose I do not know I am torn between the two I desire to depart and be with Christ. So part of him does want to go ahead and get on out of here. I'm sure um, the extent of his misery is something we probably cannot begin to imagine. I'm torn between the two. I, desi I desire to, de to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. You guys, I love that. My happy new you video. I talk about the fact that we, no, my you are not fat video. Probably either, no, probably you are not fat. I talk about the fact that we are not our bodies. We are in them. These bodies are vehicles. And he said, it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. He is distinguishing a difference between him and his body. I love it. So convinced of this, this is verse 25, convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. Okay, he's saying, convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and your joy in the faith. 
so that through my being with you, again, your joy in Christ Jesus will overflow on account of me. So he's kind of like, look, I'd love to skip on out of here, but I'm not going to because I know that it's more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Whatever happens, conduct yourselves in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then whether I come and see you or only hear about you in my absence, I will know that you stand firm in one spirit, contending as one man for the faith of the gospel without being frightened in any way by those who oppose you. This is a sign to them that they will be destroyed, but that you will be saved and that by, and that by God. So he's saying we are one body with no fear. I love the verse, you know, when God is for us, who could be against us? And all of this also reminds me of Romans 8, 28, that says that, um, all things work together for the good of those who, who love and know the Lord. So ultimately God is in control and he is working out all the details to ultimately glorify him. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for him, which I love because, um, you know, that the false gospels, the false prophets, um, that say health, wealth, and prosperity will be yours. If only you accept Jesus. That's absolutely not what we're told, but also suffer for him. For it has been granted to you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for him. And this is the final verse in chapter one. Since you are going through the same struggle you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. So he is letting people know, you know that I was suffering, and now you know I still am. I'm still in this prison. Um, but my heart is free and that was, um, a good portion of what my preacher preached this morning at church, um, in the book of Acts 16, 25 through 32. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison were shaken. At once, the prison doors flew open, and everybody's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself. We're all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? He was convinced. He had heard the, heard the singing and then he saw the way these men conducted themselves after there was an earthquake and they could have taken off and run free, but they didn't. They replied, this is what Paul and Silas said, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and his, all his family were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God. He and his whole family. So we've been doing a series on family. Um, and this morning it was about peace. So how to have peace in your family. Um, but also how to have peace in your heart. And again, it has everything to do with what's going on inside of us and nothing to do with what's going on outside. Um, we can count on chaos and confusion going on outside of us. But um, when we accept Christ and we have the Holy Spirit dwelling within, we can enjoy a peace beyond understanding. That's Philippians 4, 7. Um, Philippians, and we'll get, we'll get to that. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So, all right, ladies, that was my Sunday sermon. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, uh, I just am um, so glad to be traveling with you on this journey. And, um, and 
we can know that we're headed in the right direction together. How great is that? Love you guys. We'll talk soon.